doing? Rubbish Mechanic here. Um, just thought I'd do uh, a video on showing you how to change the brakes on an MG3 1.5. Uh, I don't believe there's uh, many technical videos on these uh, on the internet, so if I can be of help, uh, why not? So we're going to be changing the disc pads on this vehicle. Uh, I'm going to go through step by step of how you actually go about the task, and I'll also tell you the what tools and special bits of equipment you need to do the job. So we'll start off by undoing the two caliper bolts from the caliper bridge of which you'll need a 7mm allen key. And they should just come straight undone with no issues. Like so. And the top one. caliper towards you just to relieve a little bit of the pressure on the brakes etc or you can use a screwdriver or a prying device it will come undone and you'll be able to lift the caliper out of the way once that's undone all of the way dry that is Like so, when you hang a caliper up out of the way for a moment, you can remove the old pads. Like so, they should just pull out like that. And like I say, they are quite badly worn and are due for changing. Right, hang the caliper up out of the way. So. And now we need to undo the caliper bridge, which on a normal 3.8 drive ratchet and a 15mm socket, it shouldn't take too much hassle. So, crack the top one off. Remove the caliper bridge, and we'll come back to that shortly. We need to clean it now. To remove the disc, particularly if the vehicle has had uh, has not had brakes replaced before, such as this one, there usually is a manufacturer's bolt that goes into the front of the disc, which serves no purpose than to hold the disc on during production, and they can be a bit tight. This one's come undone not too bad. Like so, and that should just fall off with your completely worn out disc. Okay. Okay, now the old disc is often removed, it's an ideal opportunity to go and clean the hub face and prepare the caliper for its new pads. And the way I do it is get some decent brake cleaner across the front of the hub, just give it all a real damn good soaking. Around the old grease and road grime and get in there with a decent cloth, wipe everything down and it reveals a very nice clean hub face. And then with a wire brush on the front of the hub where the old disc has been mounted, give it all a real damn good clean. Like so. One final wash off. Give it a quick rub with the cloth. 
And the next step is I apply some copper slip across the front of the hub. You don't have to do that, but it makes it easier for the next guy, whoever's going to do the brakes. Like so. Now, time comes to repair the new disc. Like I said, these come with like a, um, a machine in grease on, and it's always best to give them a clean. You don't want that uh, touching the new pads, and you'll end up with brake squeals and all that kind of nasty stuff that you don't want from new brakes. Just literally give it a quick wipe off. Now, when you put the disc on, there's a little hole on the front there, and that's what the little manufacturer's bolt goes back into. You sit the disc back on the front of the hub, hold it square, the little nut, straight back in there, whilst holding the disc. You get your spanner or your socket, it's a T50. So, there's no torque setting or anything on that, just use your common sense so it's not too tight. Now with that fitted, I prefer this time to make it time to prepare your caliper. Now we need to wind back the piston in the caliper, and I do have the correct tool for doing this, um, it's just a caliper wind back tool. You can, if you wanted to, use some water pump pliers or plumber's pliers to cl clamp uh, the piston to the body and just force it shut. I don't tend to do that because you tend to end up nicking the rubber boot and if you have a nick in the rubber boot uh, you end up with corrosion issues and let's face it nobody wants a nick in the rubber do they? So set that in there like so. And you reverse the thread on your caliper wind back tool like so till it meets. Now and you just literally just wind it in all the way. You'll see the piston retracting into the caliper. Like so. So just very gingerly with it until it comes to a complete stop. And once it's hit base, reverse it back off like so, and lift it out of the way. Now, I'm going to give this a little bit of a clean. Now you need to apply a lot of caliper, well not a lot of caliper grease, you need to apply caliper grease in the right places. And with the pads, we'll sort those out shortly. Just use a little bit of Ceratec grease it's my personal favourite. Apply some to the front face of the piston. Stop all the rust and corrosion from happening. Like so. Now, the brake pads on an MG3, there is an inner and outer pad. And this pad here with the bump on top is the inner pad which connects into the brake piston in there and this one is the outer pad which connects in like that. Now I'll show you how you fit these shortly but there's a lot of greasing to do beforehand. Now put a little bit of this, this has got a rose clip. You want to grease each ear on the rose clip like so. And then some around where the piston meets. We have already greased the, uh, the caliper there, but a little more won't hurt. Now, these do have an abutment clip there, which when the brake pad wears down to its worn out level, that will catch the outer lip of the disc and make a horrendous racket. So it's ideal time to change the pads. Now with the rose clip, you lower it in, get the pad lined up, and just push equal pressure with your thumbs and it goes straight in. Okay? Now, the outer pad. I'm gonna put a little bit of grease. You can you can grease the caliper on the ears here and here, or do the front of the front of the pad where the ears sit. 
I prefer just to go in straight on the front of the pad, like so. Smear a little bit of grease in, like so. Rotate the pad, and it's as good as that. Now, next step is the caliper bridge. And we'll come back to that in a moment. When your pads are set in the caliper, you can leave it hanging there, there's no drama about that, it's perfectly safe. Uh, it's time to move on to the caliper bridge. Now you can see where the old pads have been riding on the caliper bridge and it's left an ideal witness mark as to where you need to put your grease. And obviously there's a lot of road grime and dirt and crud and schmoo all over that. And we've got to get it off, give it a good clean. And nice little wire brush. Work brake clean. Let's do one side at a time. You just want a gentle brush stroke. I'm going to go all full gorilla on it. Etc. Etc. Like so. Should be all nice and clean. Same again on the other side. Like so. And that is pretty much with an ATE system like this that doesn't have abutment clips or brake hardware, that's the best you can do. Now I will apply a little bit of copper slip onto these, like so. And we'll remount the caliper bridge. Remount the caliper bridge. Bolts there. Like so. I just hate it when that happens. <laughs> of course if I was at the garage I'd be using air tools but this is a, uh, a DIY job on the drive. So you've got to use what you've got. Oh, so now these do have a torque setting on them. Um, normally I'll just use common sense but because it's a proper video that I'm trying to help everybody out with I will actually set the torque which is exactly a hundred newton meters on these 100 foot-pounds let's use a simple torque wrench like so and set that back down to 100 like so And just go down like so. Okay. Right. Next step is to bolt the caliper back in place. Now we need a little bit more grease, caliper grease, just on the front lips here. A bit more than that. Like so, just to keep the old corrosion at bay, stop brake squeals, noise, and all that kind of stuff that you don't want. And you also have your brake caliper retaining clips, which you need a tiny, tiny little bit, a little bit on the threads, a little bit on there, because these are actually what the caliper slides on. So you've got to make sure that they're nicely lubed up. So, one in there. The other one, put the grease around it, goes around the other side, just that lever. Give me Danny's a quick wipe, move these out of the way. 
Now, you need to pay attention that when you're reinstalling the caliper, make sure that the main brake feed pipe there isn't twisted, such as that, because you will have a big problem on your hands. And it is a bit of an oversight, which you'll see quite well all too often. So now, it's literally slide the caliper in. Pay particular attention, particularly on these MG3s, there is a little hook that the caliper drops into, and then the caliper is literally just reinstalled like so. Push slide bolts back in. We'll do the top one first. Back with the 7mm Allen key. Back on, tighten up. in the same with the bottom one these can be a bit of a fiddle to get back in line properly like so Yeah, they're quite, um, particularly these ATE systems with a sliding caliper such as this, with the Allen key fitments, they're very, very prone to going in cross-threaded. And this one just caught me out there, and it didn't go in cross-threaded, but I did see it happen. So make sure that it doesn't go in cross-threaded because it will end up at a little bit of a funny angle like this here. And you don't want to be doing that because you'll end up buying a new caliper bridge. A little bit of a pain and too much expense. There we go. So just nip them up, don't need to go too tight. Tight enough is good enough. <laughs> like so. And that. Nice free brakes. And that is how you do front brakes on a MG3. Any questions, any comments, stick them down below and I'll be glad to help. Thank you very much.